We're going to take a look at a really good quality writing slope, early 19th century writing slope, by one of the great makers, Thomas Handford. So we can see the box is brass edged. It's also got two brass tram lines inlaid for decoration. A shaped escutcheon, which is echoed to the engraving plate to the top, which is also quite decorative. And uh, super flush campaign handles to the side, which are a little bit unusual in their design and stand out. And in fact, also, you can see from the side uh, the wonderful grain of the rosewood, which has been used to make this box as well. Um, so that's a, that's a really nice selection of timber that the maker used. So let's open it up and have a look. So typically the boards always slide down, but actually that's quite good because underneath this board, like a lot of writing slopes, you will find holes for a removable lectern bar. More often than not with writing slopes, this bar is missing or has been replaced. This one looks to be original, quite a nice shape, also rosewood, it's got two steel pins. We shall show you where that goes in a minute. So the interior has got a red leather skiver. Now this is later. Um, originally it probably would have had bays. This skiver has been put on by uh, a previous owner, um, probably not that too long ago, maybe within the last 20, 30 years. We've got an arm here which lifts up and this corresponds to teeth here so that you can set the top of a slope at various different angles. So if we turn that around like that, we've got two holes here in the brass edging to put our little lectern bar. And with that on there, we can get our book for reading. That will be supported nicely. We can open it up and of an evening we can read our book. Now underneath this little arm for supporting the lectern, we have got a brass pin. Now typically when you've got a brass pin on one of these edges, it's to lock a side drawer. But this slope doesn't actually have a side drawer. So what's the pin for? Well, we shall show you. In our little desk tidy area at the top here, we've got two inkwells, a little covered section, a pen tray, which tips to lift out. And this is where the keys are kept. So we're going to open the top of the interior of the slope. And inside we have got a tray, very nicely shaped handles. Now we can feel that that has got a little bit of movement and that's typically an area where you find the secret drawers on a writing slope. But how do you access them? Well, sometimes these dividers lift up. These do, but that's not it. Sometimes there's a hole in the lock that you might put the pin. Not on this one. But it does have a hole for putting the pin and that's what this pin is for. It's for releasing the secret drawers. Now, if I lift this up, hopefully you can see in that corner there, there is a little hole. So we shall push the pin in there. There you go, lovely sound. 
of this fascia board being released on its spring. And we can see there the spring, and we can see the brass fitting that will take the catch, and the three holes to take the draw knobs. So there we've got three little rosewood faced mahogany drawers, super little dovetails to it, and that's where you would uh, keep your guineas or your love letters, etc. Everyone likes a secret drawer. And there you go, that pushes back nice and neatly there, and we shall put the pin back there. Now, in the tray, you might have noticed that we have got a pair of candle arms. Now, not all riding slopes had candle arms. Uh, in fact, most of them didn't. And those that did, more often than not, they're missing from the box. This one uh, is fantastic because it's got the two candle arms and they're made to dismantle. So the sconce just threads in there. You can see the top of the sconce has got a nice petal shape to it. So that will go in there. Quickly do the other one up. That goes in there. We can pop in the candles and uh, when we're working at night, we've got some light to do so. But what we also see here is the maker's label for Thomas Hanford. And let's just remove the candle arms. Bring that into the camera a little bit so you can have a closer look. There. Now, the address on this label is Seven Strand. And although Thomas Hanford started in 1797, we know that he moved to Seven Strand in 1813. So that gives us a, a start date for when this box might have been made. So uh, the only other thing we need to know is the parameter of the end date. Well, the company ended in 1865. Thomas Jr. had taken over from his father. But there are more clues on this box. And that is the lock. And hopefully you can see there the lock. Now, the lock is made by Thompson of Birmingham, and he took out a patent for this lock in 1808. But we can also see stamped on the lock, GR with a crown. Now, that gives us the monarch's name. Well, William IV reigned from 1830, when he took over from the Georges. So that gives us our date parameter of 1813 to 1830 that this box would have been made. Um, now, Thomas Hanford were great makers. You can read more about them on our website. They're known, of course, for their lightweight patent waterproof trunk, which was black leather with brass banding, very distinctive, great looking trunk. You can see examples also on our website. Um, but they were very, very good box makers who uh, spent uh, most of their career at different addresses on the Strand. Um, this is a great box. It's fantastic that it's still got its original candle arms. Lovely timber, great decoration with a brass edging. So really good looking thing. And it can be dated to between 1813 and 1830. Made of rosewood, Thomas Hansford.